Davis. Hello everyone, this is Rotalus, and welcome to my inaugural modeling tutorial video. For those of you just joining us, I recently held a vote on my DeviantArt page as to which character from the expansive Sonic universe I should make a model of next, and the results are in. The character you chose to be the subject of this modeling video is none other than Miles Tails Prower. Ah yes, Tails the aptly named sidekick of Sonic the Hedgehog and longtime player number two of the franchise, known for his genius intellect, inexplicable flying ability, and the countless memes and parody of which he is subject. Today, we are going to pay our respects to the veteran Vulpine by making a little tribute of our own. So, what I'm going to do today is a sort of pseudo-tutorial where I will go through the process of modeling the character uh, but by no means will this end up looking like the character. We're not going for a 100% on-model representation of Tails. But for those of you interested in seeing how I make my models, it might give you some ideas if you want to start working on Blender and making models in there. So let's get started. Okay, so to start with, we're going to... Um, well, we're going to start with Tails here. We're going to uh, make a little uh, shape here. We're going to make a sphere. Um, but first we're going to get the cursor centered as you can see there we're gonna to go to the mesh and when I figure out which one of these things I want to press UV sphere UV sphere UV sphere there it is UV sphere all right so we're gonna reduce the number of ring segments in the sphere just to give it um, about 16 by 16 I often find it easier to work with when there's less uh, when there's just less uh, ring segments they're giving me an optimal number of um, control of uh, control points and not so many that it's overwhelming, but just enough to, you know, give me the idea of the shape. All right, so we're going to go into edit mode here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, do my favorite thing, start the, <laughs> the screencast key, so you can kind of see what I'm writing. You'll notice, though, that I'm going to speed up the video from here on out, and it'll be kind of hard to see what's on there, so I'm just going to have to tell you what I'm doing. We're going to scale this down a little bit. We're just sort of like matching it up with his head, and we're going to delete half of this uh, and put it into mirror mode. And now we're going to go ahead and start shaping the thing. We're going to kind of bulb it out, pull some uh, some some edges, because we're making Tails' head. It's kind of like an egg head. He's got a kind of almost flat top head. It's sort of like wide at the top, and so we're going to we're going to do that. We're just going to start pulling things out, moving things. A lot of this is just shaping, uh, just um, looking at what the character looks like and you're like alright well how are we gonna best represent this you notice I'm doing this freehand for the most part and we're gonna cut his eye holes here um, yeah so like I said I'm doing this freehand I can I often do and I recommend it if you're gonna make a model that you try to get some reference art or something like that but often it hinders me because I wanted to make like my representation of tails and in order to do that um, I believed that it would be best just to kind of go off of what he looks like and then just sort of <laughs> play around with uh, some concepts there. I could have found a lot of art online, but then I would have been making, recreating that art and not really uh, doing my own thing here. And that's what this was about. We uh, wanted to, I wanted to kind of show you guys how it is I go about making models uh, in Blender. And uh, when you guys see this, um, He'll be partially done, because today we're just focusing on Tails' head. And as you can see, it's a lot of shaping, a lot of just moving parts around, making sure um, we get that kind of doughiness in Tails' eyes. You can see in parts of the, uh, when you when I zoom out a lot of the time, you can see the, uh, the shape of Tails' eyes is actually kind of... It's like an oval, like two half circles. Um, and it's sort of like... I guess it makes him look younger. Um, less experience. It's like he's the young sidekick, so he's like, I guess, more hopeful. Sonic's all jaded with his angular eyes, like, yeah, I'm cool. It's like Tails, like, no, nah, whatever, man. So we're bringing um, the bottom in for his cheeks there, and we're going to um, angle them upward. So when it's time to make his whiskers, it uh, like kind of like has like his face has a flow to it. Um, you'll see in a moment what I mean by that. So, um, next thing's next. We're just going to continue to uh, mess around with these eyes here. We're going to continue to uh, constantly, constantly shape his head. 
and I'm just never satisfied sometimes with the way it looks. Gonna bring in uh, the middle part of his uh, his head and whatnot. So we're gonna start on the ears, which is often the most difficult part for me, just because I want to make it look close to the character, but not exactly. Um, you don't know notice this, but like I went through like three different uh, tries on these ears. This is the last time I tried to make ears. Uh, it just wasn't happening. In fact, this is my second time trying to model his head, in all honesty. But uh, this is like the successful attempt, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. They're not 100% on model. And I've said this, and I've got to stress this, and it's kind of like this is uh, Rodolis' interpretation of the character. I'm not saying that to kind of get out of scrutiny, it's just this is kind of where I felt like going at the time. Um... <clears throat> so so unprofessional I know but um <laughs> you can see I'm shaping it bringing it forward uh, uh, working on those tips I'll be doing some detailing later um, oftentimes I find myself spending most of my time working on characters since all I've done so far as Sonic the Hedgehog characters is working on their ears because it's like that's a huge part of their uh, like their defining features like you take Tails' head off of Tails' body he ain't tails no more, you know. It, it's it's very important that uh, that this kind of stuff gets um, translated, you know, close enough. So now I'm gonna be doing the inner detail on tails' ears. This is uh, you know, you use the knife tool there, as you can see. I cut a little hole, and I'll, later I'll be going in and I'll be uh, beveling that, but um, I uh, I leave off of that for uh, something else. So another defining trait of tails' is face. Which would be his, uh, you'll see in a moment, his whiskers, yes. We're going to separate, no, I'm messing around with his head. Okay, no, nope. all right. <laughs> I kind of lost track. No, didn't like that. We're looking at his whiskers now. We're looking at how they're shaped. And um, we're going to separate the um, uh, front part of his face from the whole model by hitting P after selecting the uh, vertices that I wanted. And then I'm just going to make a few uh, ring segments there uh, using Control R and uh, moving them down. So I'm making his whiskers very much in the similar vein to how I made uh, Fiona's, except this is honestly way better because <laughs> I have a better idea of what I'm doing. Everything like that came before this was really, really just sort of whatever works. I'll put it out there. I started off with a lot of squares in my earlier models. This is like a uh, everything spheres now because the sphere already has a natural shape of a character's head. I was using squares when I started off with characters like Sally and Bunny. Uh, you'll see on my DeviantArt page because it's, it, it, it's, it was easier for me to grasp what a square could do. I was like, yeah, okay, a square. I know where the front, the side, and the back is on the square, and if I can just manipulate those things just on straight on the axis, right? You know. Uh, just the degrees, like, all right, I come out straight on a square, I come out left or right. It was just because I was being lazy, and I was just learning. But um, I've, I've since converted to spheres. I've, uh, I've seen the light. <laughs> I'm a better man, I think, today, because of my sphere knowledge. <laughs> my sphere game is on point. Uh, you can go ahead and ignore that. That's not, that's not a real thing. But what is... Uh, is is these whiskers they are real good I think um they're pointier than the reference image but that's like I said the reference image is just to give me an idea of the details that I want to include they're not necessarily I don't use reference images uh as anymore or as much like for a type of character or a human type character I will definitely use a reference image but right now it's just like don't worry about it just sort of go freehand and I think I've said that freehand I think this might be the third or fourth time I've mentioned it. So, um, I'm a fan of it. <laughs> I am a fan of the freehand. Now, um, here I'm adding some more loop cuts to the uh, whisker part of the head because I just want to make it look poofier, more fur-like, without uh, making it too straight. See, the, um, uh, the drawback of uh, using loop cuts is the fact you put too many on there you'll actually start to straighten out the uh, the surface it'll start looking really boxy the more uh, subdivides that you make so it's important that you kinda make you strike a balance is how many loop cuts is too much now we are going to reattach the muzzle to the rest of the head or in some places um, because 
I wanted to bring those those parts back in, so I hit you know Control J to join back these two objects that I had made separate, and now they're back together. Of course, I have to add a new loop cut because now I've since I've added more um, lines to the muzzle than were on the actual original sphere. I'm trying to figure that out now. I was trying to use the knife tool uh, just to make it simpler on myself, but it's gonna turn out later that I'm not gonna be able to use the knife tool. I'm gonna actually have to add a straight up loop cut, which whatever. Well, uh, you'll see in a moment, that's fine. So just connecting some more pieces, pulling those out to make it look more like a muzzle. You, you notice if you look at the reference image that uh, Tails has like a uh, kind of poofy kind of thing that drops below, like his jaw, like the fur of his bottom jaw kind of goes over uh, like the bottom of his head, like his neck, where his neck would be. I don't know if you can see that. You're not going to notice that from here. It's moving around too fast. But um, <laughs> perhaps I should have slowed this down. Um, if you guys want, I can always upload the uh, full version of this. Like, obviously edited to take out all the boring parts. But, like, a full version of this modeling video. It's much slower. You'll see every single thing that I did. But it will be, like, two hours long. I don't know how much you want that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the bevel move, like I was talking about earlier, um, on the... Um, on the ear, the inner ear, uh, to get that kind of, I like this, this shape here that you can see. And um, I'm just going to move down some of the vertices to have the inner ear there. It might be a little exaggerated. I might come back and fix it later. Um, I think it's, I think it's fine right now. I mean, I loved it at the time. I was like, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> I'm marking the seam so that when I add textures, um, just, you like to mark scenes as early as possible. While you're still in mirror mode, it's pref it's preferable because uh, you want to make sure that you don't have to do a whole bunch of different seams. I will explain that later. All right, so now we're moving on to the nose, his snout, kind of short, not really long, um, and where his nose will go. We're going to make his mouth here. We're going to do some, uh, we're gonna use a knife tool. His mouth is just kind of interesting. It's not like I've been making mouths. Before I was making characters with lips, and then I looked at a lot of Sonic characters, like, they don't have lips, they just have mouth opening parts, and I've been, uh, I've been warring in myself of whether or not I should focus on trying to make them look more on model, more like the cartoon character versions of themselves, so I'm trying to make Tails look a little bit, at least right here, uh, more like himself as he appears in, in games and stuff like that. But that's just because it's easier to model his mouth that way. <laughs> I don't have to worry about doing too many different shapes. Like, later on, I'll be uh, drawing a lot of shape keys, making a lot of different um, uh, expressions. So you try, you want to set up, set yourself up to have an easy go of that. You want to make sure that you have, like, um, just his mouth will move the way you expect it to based on the way you set up vertices like it's super important to make sure that uh, none of them collide into each other another thing that I will show you later once we get past this um, particular video after this I'm going to be making his body I'm just going to finish making the models and then I'll come back and show you shape keys here we're making his nose um, out of a sphere usually I use squares but the sphere I think worked better because I was looking at the reference image and I'm like oh that's his nose is kind of round it's rounder it's rounded. You know how Sonic's nose is a freaking spear? This is like a really kind of like a, I don't know, not a realistic fox nose. He's, Tails is by no re means a realistic fox, but that's that's kind of what I'm going for here. So I'll make it larger later. It's just that I wanted to bring that in. Everything's in mirror mode, so you got to be careful when you're scaling things so that they don't all just scale on one, a one axle. Yeah, one axis. And uh, here I am messing around with some of the uh, settings here, just like where it goes. It's a little small. Like I said, I will come back later after I save, and then I will uh, up upscale his nose. Very important detail. Tails' nose always, always finicking, always finicking over the. That's not the word. Fidgeting over the details. Just coming back and we're like, oh, I don't like the way that's particularly shaped. It's not great. So I always like, even when I make new videos, like you'll probably see me in the in the body video that I'm going to be uploading next. Um, Messing around with his ears some more because I just am not satisfied sometimes with these things. Okay, now we're going to make Tails' uh, coxcomb, his uh, little um, hair doodads. A lot of the characters in Sonic Universe have these. Like, Amy has one. Tails has one. Like, even other characters that don't necessarily have them, their, their hair is kind of shaped like that. Sally's got, Sally's got bangs. It's like, it's a, it's a thing. I don't know who decided it was going to be a thing, but it's like a lot of the characters have like these, as you can see, big just sharp hair bits on the front of their head because it's cute. 
I'm not going to pretend I don't like it. I love it. It's great. Um, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we're just going to make another one here. And to save time, we're actually not going to make a separate one. We're going to copy, as you can see. We're going to duplicate that, hit that D button, and we're going to move this into the other area. So now we have a second little um, little hair thing. We're going to just connect it with the uh, Alt-M tool there, the uh, merge at last. Make sure that it lines up with the original one. And that's how we're gonna kind of do this because it's faster this way. It's easier to kind of like get very similar uh, similar shapes. I'll be doing this later with the fingers as well. You'll notice that um, when I make his fingers, I'm not gonna make all five fingers. I'm gonna make um, the thumb and the forefinger, and then after that, I'm just gonna copy it over and shrink it down, make it fit, you know, that kind of thing. Cause it's just easier to do that. It's um, simpler, and yeah. We're going to copy this one now. It's huge. And every time you get a kind of like a different shape, because of course I had to make that one be the middle one. Now this one's going to have to be the third one, and it's going to be like differently sized, and it's all it's it's like a building upon each other. And I kind of like that about that uh, the particular method. Um, they are all relatively the same shape. They all look like each other. I'm questioning whether or not I'll be rigging these, or if they'll just be... Well, I'm going to have to, actually. If he moves around, that's going to have to move realistically when I animate this character. So I do plan on doing it at some point. Just not in this particular video. So, like, to be 100% transparent with you guys, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to finish modeling this character. And then I'm going to rig the character. I'm going to add shape keys so that his face moves. He has facial expressions and, like, different kinds of gestures that he can make. Um, and then I'm going to rig him with a actual, you know, blender rig. And I'm going to go through all of those processes. This is going to be a 100% all the way through. These are the fast videos. The longer videos are going to be, like, if you guys really want to see that, I'll upload it with some maybe some mood music, just some something easily listening. And uh, you can watch the entire process as it goes by. Um, mildly sped up, just because I cut out a lot of stuff that, just when I got up and left the computer, you wouldn't want to see that anyway. So, uh, yeah, adding some more seams or so like, you know, where we're going to separate the white fur of his mouth and muzzle from the yellow fur of his head, the top of his head at least, and the, like, you know, back of his head, uh, just to make sure that that is all uh, taken care of. I'll add some more seams later to uh, create, like, a, to create, like, you know, the uh, illusion of a hair thing. So, next thing's next. We're making his eyes. So, this is how I make eyes. It's it's going to be interesting. You'll see. Um, so, I add a, a, a lattice, and I added um, different uh, segments to that lattice. And then I parent the plane that I just made, as you can see, to that lattice. So, now, um, whenever I move, as you can see, the um, uh, lattice, it moves the plane. And the plane remains a flat surface. So I don't actually have to edit that in the first place. It makes it easier to do, and so I'm just going to move some things around here. And we're going to edit the plane based on the lattice. And this is how I've been making eyes for all of my characters. Um, well, since I figured out how to do this, it was a wonderful, wonderful a moment for me when I learned how to make that happen. So we're going to go ahead and um, start working on the materials of the eyes. There were some issues there with the computer. I don't know what that was about. We're going to go ahead and add a texture. I have drawn textures already. That's the character eye text that I use for all of the characters. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to unwrap this um, mesh. For a while there, I wasn't sure, so we're going to add light first. I uh, added some sun backgrounds. I added the, um, uh, the sky background, the sky texture. And then I added some light sources so that when he's in rendered mode, like right now, you can kind of see all of him at once. Um, and I like to use Cycles Render. You might notice that. So I'm going to add some seams around the um, uh, plane here. And then I'm going to unwrap it. And now you can see how the um, uh, mesh lines up with the actual texture. You can see in both windows there. Um, you scale that. You scale this around. So this is not yet done. We next want to do a um, um, what's called a UV uh, <laughs> a UV project. And we're going to make this little this thing into an eye focus. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. We're going to go to a UV project. And we're going to select Tails Eye Focus and that character um, texture. And we're going to override it. And then we're going to, you'll see in a moment, flip the, um, um, 
the eye focus on the x-axis is by about 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees, I believe, regular 90 degrees, so that now we're controlling the eye texture, how, or how it's presented, right there with that. And that's how you get eyes to move. That's how I've been getting eyes to move for a while now. And um, so, like, in rendered mode, you can see that. And you can move him around, and he can look up and down, left and right. Now he looks like he has a pair of eyes. Um, the next big step is to, of course, rig that, but... Like, if you just want to have a quick and dirty way to have character eyes, that's how I've been doing it for a very long time. And so, the uh, last but not least, the uh, next thing that I want to show you guys is, uh, after I do a lot more shaping, because I just am crazy about that, is add some eyelids. He needs eyelids to cover his eyes, um, and so I edit them in mirror mode, use two planes, do some extrusions here. You can see, uh, as I pull some parts out there, and, uh, yeah... You're about to you're about to witness some magic here. You're gonna scale them down, flip them on the x-axis, and then we're just gonna do some shaping, some uh, some really kind of fine tuning. And it's a pretty simple process making eyelids. Um, they're important to get done in mirror mode, like a lot of these things, just because they will be a pain in the butt later. You need to make sure that this is done already. Uh, and of course, we're gonna smooth them out, make them look a little more, and we're gonna fit them behind. His, uh, I guess you call that uh, eye sockets to make sure they're not sticking out of his head too much. And, you know, you do that by selecting and grabbing and pull things out to where they need to go. Um, yeah, so you make the first eye and then we made the second one. We duplicated the top eyelid and then we just brought them back. We uh, mirrored their uh, rotation. I think that's Alt M or Control M. And then we uh, hit the space bar, type in flip normals to make sure that that looks good and then we scale them down so they're not supposed to be visible except for when he's blinking like if you've seen the characters bottom lids are not visible we're gonna scale up the nose a little bit and uh we're coming up on the end here of uh the way i make tails like roadless models tails so we're just gonna add a little uh <laughs> a material to the nose uh i have slowed down the video because this is uh, pretty much the, the home stretch here. So I just wanted to kind of uh, reiterate a few things. Um, that this model is uh, on its way to being done. I decided to chop it up into a couple of different videos. And there you go. Now his um, his nose is being rendered there. And there there you go. There's the beginnings of, uh, of our uh, little Tails tutorial. That's, that's Tails' head right there. Enjoy that. That's lovely, isn't it? Um, so, <laughs> yeah, like I said, this is going to be like the first in a series. We're going to do a little, um, a, a little kind of, you guys are interested in seeing how I make models, or if you want to see me make a specific type of model, you can always um, join in on uh, on my page on DeviantArt or comment on this video. Say, hey, man, I want to see this, and then it'll show up in a poll that I'll make and then you guys can vote on it and I think it would be fun to kind of do that but you know you'll let me know if you like this sort of thing in general um, like I said this could be a uh, tips and tricks video if you really want it to be I'd have to slow it down significantly probably get more in depth about what I'm actually doing I feel like I rushed through a lot of these points um, so if anything didn't make any sense you just let me know that and uh, yeah um, thank you guys for watching um, you've been wonderful. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Hey guys, if you liked this video, let me know in the comments, and if you didn't like it, same deal. Let me know how I can improve. If you're interested in my work, or want to have a say in what I do next, feel free to subscribe here on YouTube, or follow me on my DeviantArt page. I'm always doing something or other over there. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Rodeless, and you've been wonderful. See you next time. Rodalus, the two, is silent.